Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Antenna series. And today we're going to flip everything we've learned on its side and build some vertical antennas. So I'm Jeremy, KJ7IAZ, and this is Ham Radio Insights. All right, guys, welcome back to Ham Radio Insights. I'm your host, Jeremy. KJ7IAZ, and uh, today I just want to talk about everything that we've kind of learned already. If you haven't watched those videos, go back and you can rewatch those after this and get a feel for some of the antenna builds that we've already done. Um, this video, we're not going to build uh, antenna necessarily, just talk about all the different ways that you can build them, show you some tips and stuff like that, and just kind of some commercial products that they're inspired from, and kind of help you make a decision on what you want to do. If you guys want to see some specific builds, let me know in the comments and we'll put some videos together on the specific antennas that we talk about. First and foremost, um, with a little help from the mustache antenna, um, this is just your generic dipole. Um, the center conductor of the coax is going into one leg and the shield is going to the other. Actually, I think I said that backwards, but the um, center conductor is on this side. But so, so what we want to do today is we want to take this horizontal dipole and we want to make it vertical, okay? So why would you want to do that? Well, there's a couple advantages of a vertical over a horizontal dipole. And one of the big things is the angle of radiation. So when you're taking your horizontal antenna out, you're going to go kind of more up in the air, if you will. It just going to depends on the height and stuff like that of the antenna. Well, when you turn the antenna on the side, you, you're getting at a lot lower angle of radiation, which is what you need when you're chasing uh, distance contacts or the DX contact. So if you want to start doing more long, long distance type stuff, a vertical antenna is a great way to go. If you can't get that super high or you don't have that uh, Yegi antenna or something like that to really get you over there. And it's really inexpensive to build a, a vertical antenna too. So, so looking at this, if we flip this over, there's a couple disadvantages uh, also. One is if you were to make this for um, 20 meters, it gets really, really tall. And to put your feed point up 17 feet or more, 20 feet, 30 feet, you know, just so you have enough length for that bottom, you know, and then you start talking 40 and 80 and 160 meters, it, it becomes um, kind of impossible, not impossible, but improbable to be able to actually put this thing up that high. So one of the things that you can do uh, I guess that's kind of a disadvantage, but you, there's there's building techniques to avoid that. So most of the time you hear about like a ground plane or something like that. If you start looking at some of the stuff that you see on YouTube, I'm sure you're all familiar with the uh, DX Commander where you've got a vertical antenna and um, all the different ground radials and stuff. So that's one way to do it is you, you're basically taking that dipole and bringing that other leg up. And one of the things that it does is actually brings your impedance into more of a match that way. So it's actually kind of a, a blessing in disguise at that point. But um, there's more to vertical antennas than just flipping it over. So I'll, we'll go through some of the different things and some different ideas and hopefully it helps you build something. So first of all, one of the most probably popular in volume vertical antennas is going to be um, off of a handy talk. You know, that's just a vertical antenna for VHF, UHF, uh, etc. But um, your ground plane is basically either the, the frame of the radio or your hand once you grab it. You know, you're, you're coupling to that and you're creating a ground plane for that signal to go off of. So just about everybody has one of these. Um, this is, you know, the vertical antenna in its simplest form. Um, the next probably most popular one would be something that you put on your vehicle. Um, what I have here is just a Comet and I've got it mounted up to uh, a piece of metal. I could set this down somewhere and it would work just as, as it is. And um, this is just kind of good good frame of reference. It's I got a Diamond K400 mount on there. It's a lip mount. You put this somewhere on your vehicle, make sure you got a good ground connection there and then your your vertical your center conductor is actually going through here and then your ground is and your shielding is going to the vehicle or your piece of metal. You could actually utilize that um, like I did here with a piece of metal or if you had like a cookie sheet or anything like that. The other thing you see a lot of is the mag mounts. They're just magnetically attaching to that metal and then that creates a coupling to that ground plane. 
and there you have it in, in Antana. So that's you see a lot of those around when you see on vehicles and stuff, and that's how those are actually working. So you can use those for inspiration, but I wanna show you, most of you guys are here to see how to build something like this. So let me show you a couple things there too. So I've got here a bit of wire, um, and this is solid wire. I like to use the solid wire when I'm working with smaller antennas because in doing something like this, because it, it does, it'll hold a shape and you can make it um, without having to have anything hanging or any supports or anything like that too. And it keeps that cost down. So you can build a vertical antenna for VHF, UHF, very, very inexpensively. Uh, just quick trip to the hardware store and get about everything you need. Um, next thing you need is, is something like this. You don't have to have this. You could just trim the end of your coax like we did here and um, just put the center conductor to one side and the shield side to the other. But these are kind of handy. These are nice too. Uh, you can get these pretty much uh, on, the, on the internet, you know, radio supply stores and stuff like that. So what it is is just the uh, SO239 connector. And it's really handy because the mounting holes um, can serve is where your ground plane connectors are going. Your, your shield's gonna come out of here. So then use what you can do is just trim back a little bit of wire, stuff that wire down in here so your center conductor's on there, run your ground planes out. Uh, if you put them at about a 45 degree angle, that's about right if you're gonna hang it. At the end of your wire, after you measure it for whatever frequency you wanna tune it to, if you put a little bit of a loop on it, you could put a little plastic carabiner or a little piece of nylon string or something at the top and that's something that you could hang it on, hoist it up, um, however you wanna mount that, but you can get that up in the air a little bit too. And uh, obviously with VHF, UHF, that kind of those smaller antennas, the height is might. So remember that when you're putting it up there, get it as high as you can. You don't have to have a lot of height, you know, to make it work, depending on where your repeaters are, what the terrain is and stuff like that, if that's what you're making it for, um, just get it up as high as you can and you'll be good. Uh, I've set them out on the ground with uh, you know with stiff wire will hold it sitting up there and I've gotten into repeaters that way and talked to people. So I mean it's just try it and see if you can get it to work with what you've got. Another thing that you can do, I got some copper tape here, you could literally take this and you could do it horizontal or vertical, it wouldn't really matter, but for just an in indoor type antenna or potentially on your vehicle in the back window or something of a pickup if it's all solid. You take this tape and just run out a length, you know, about 18 inches for VHF, get two lengths and put your um, center conductor to one side and, and your shield to the other side. You could make that vertical dipole in a, you know, in a, in a window or something on your sliding glass window or something and then you're sitting at the kitchen table, just, just plug in and have it there. So, I mean, there's some cool ideas that you can do with some of that stuff. Uh, once you understand some of these concepts and how they're actually getting put together and working, they, uh, it's, you know, the possibilities are endless, you know, use your creativity and, you know, buy a couple of these things and throw them in your, on your workbench or whatever for your ham shack. And you can start to build some of this stuff and play around with it and really understand what's going on and how some of these things are working. And then, um, talking commercial stuff, like, so I have this, um, it's from MFJ. Uh, I'm not sure the model number off the top of my head, but it's just a stainless steel whip. It's, um, I want to say 17 feet long approximately. Um, and then I've got a little adapter at the end of it so I can hook it onto my diamond mount if I go portable or something. So I literally just have a vertical piece of metal that telescopes. So this will go, this will start getting vertical with HF. So um, out to 20, unless I put some sort of coil or something on the bottom of it, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But this is kind of nice. Um, I get these adapters so that I can, you know, mount them on different things depending on what the situation calls for. Um, but yeah, so this is just going to be your vertical element for HF. And then your um, coax will get plugged into your shield side will go out to some radials. Um, and then when you start talking about radials on, on a bigger thing, there's a lot of cool things happening right now. Um, there's people that are, you know, using some chicken wire or the magic carpet. Uh, that kind of stuff where they're they're laying out these like aluminum mesh window screens and that's serving as the ground plane for HF um, and it's lightweight and it's cool um, the way that's I mean it's just serving as the ground plane getting you that coupling into the ground um, you can use just 
you know, runs of wire. I, I like to, you know, bundle three or four runs of wire that are, you know, eight to 10 feet long and, and just keep adding them to my setup depending on where I want to go. And uh, I'll kind of throw a picture up for that. And you can see here that there's, uh, you know, the vertical element and then the shield's running out. So that can be pretty much anything metal. Now they say that you'll see a lot of arguments with radials where some people say they have to be cut to the band you want to use. There's some guys who are just like, hey, the more metal, the better. Um, you know, you can see that with like uh, the magic carpet stuff. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I do know from experience, if you raise them up off the ground a little bit, that they have to be a little bit more tuned. But if you're putting them right on the ground and stuff, it to personal experience, just the more metal, the better. If you want to have, you know, 40, 10 foot things, that's going to be better than three, three foot radials. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, you know, putting your radials out and they don't have to be perfectly even. Uh, the ones that I had in my backyard are kind of more of a, uh, kind of a bow tie shape. You know, my, it's kind of a long skinny yard where I have my antenna. So the shorter edges are shorter and the longer ones are longer. I just put them out as long as I could go just to get as much of that ground plane down as I possibly could. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, another cool thing that you can do is um, build something like this. This is just a couple uh, pieces of like aluminum strapping bent in, drilled some holes, and then you can get uh, some sort of mount like this, allow you to plug your coax cable in there, and then you've got your stud mount there where you could start putting things like, um, you could put the, the vertical in there that I showed you, you could put um, some ham sticks in there and whatnot and build this and I'll show you a picture here of uh, of one I built for six meters and it's got uh, ham sticks it's five ham sticks and it uh, works pretty good for six meters so um. so when you get to the lower HF bands, some of these vertical elements could get really long. So what you can do is you can put some sort of coil on them. You know, this here is just a old coil I got from a, a, a ham estate. And uh, you can literally just put it in line and that coil creates a bunch of inductance and shortens your antenna. So you don't have to have as much vertical height. Now, the trade-off is, is that the bandwidth of the frequencies, the usable frequencies is gonna get a little bit narrower. So keep that in mind, you don't wanna just load up a whole bunch of stuff, put it up the antenna, foot tall, and hope for the best. But, um, but you do get uh, a lot more kind of mechanical sta stability and stuff like that. So you don't have to go up, if you want 40, you don't have to go up 32 feet in the air and figure out how to hold that or sustain that but you can um, just shorten it that way, you know, and there's lots of different ways to shorten antennas and stuff too. And we'll maybe do a whole video just on that, but um, that's gonna be the same concept is um, say like this ham stick here I've got, this is for 20 meters and I don't know if you can tell or not through here, but it is kind of a coil. And if you have a ham stick, you can kind of look at your own, but uh, they, they coil that on the base and then the um, vertical element goes out. Um, here's a ham stick for 75 meters and you can't hardly tell that there's a coil there because they're so tight together. If you look down here on the base, it's kind of a wide coil and then it just goes into just a, as tight as they can get it coil. Um, the bandwidth on this is almost big enough for one signal. So um, you definitely got to tune that. It works good for like digital modes and stuff where you're not moving around. Um, but uh, it does work and I, I use this one. If I use this, I typically will put a tuner on it just for the fact that it does give me a little bit more agility up and down the band. But those are a couple things. And then this is the ATAS 120 from Yesu. This thing's really cool. So this is designed to be on your vehicle. Um, you, you plug it into a mount like the K400 I showed you earlier. And the radio will actually send a signal to this. And inside here is a big uh, coil, you know, just like just something similar to this. And it will actually, it's got a little motor in it, it'll actually move up and down and it'll tune it. So like if you were to look at like a hand-built coil, like this one here, um, you've got, you'd make your connection up here to your vertical element. And then as you move this tap around, you'll, you'll be able to use more or less of that coil and therefore uh, giving yourself 
you know, you have your vertical element out and you can add coil in as you need to depending on the band. This one is tuned for several different bands to be used with, um, you know, a specific size vertical, but you can go in there and tune that around and give yourself a little bit more uh, frequencies and, and use out of one antenna. So, and that's, you know, using like a tapped coil is a way, one way to use like a multiband antenna that we haven't really talked about in the um, antenna series yet. So that's kind of something new. And we'll maybe build an antenna that's just based off of that and show you actually how to build those taps and find where they should go and, and whatnot. Kind of cool. Cause then you take something like this out and I've just got a trucker mirror mount on the end of a, a repurposed music stand plug your cable in there and you've got your mounts here and then you've got a wing nut back here to apply your um ground radials you just get a i have a bundle of wires i just put onto there and now i got my ground system so um that's that's kind of a cool thing if you go up where there's a lot of trees and stuff like that having that stand and that vertical and the ground radials is a great way to go um you take these uh, little guys here and put them onto something like this and this will screw in through here you've got you can clip or, or build more of these things I'll show you that that six meter antenna that I built with that you can actually with that mount you can put if you have five of the same ham sticks you can put any of them in there too so and then you could you know go, now that you know the how a ham stick is built you can actually build your own ham sticks you know fairly easy and and uh, so we talked in our antenna series earlier about um, doing like a fan dipole, right? Well, if you take that fan dipole with all of your different elements coming out of it and you flip it on its side, you basically have a fan vertical. And if you are familiar with what we talked about, the DX Commander, that's essentially just a fan dipole on its side, up a pole, and very well engineered put together to make all that stuff work really well. Um, is you look at more commercial products and stuff like that, you'll see them, you know, all the little catalogs and stuff that I'm sure you get. You'll see a lot of like trap stuff too. So the last episode we did a trapped um, dipole and had multi-band stuff there. Well, a lot of the vertical antennas that you see on the market are, are a trapped vertical, right? So you'll see these little different ways of trapping all the way up and then you have to put those together and build and tune a little bit and just get them all kind of dialed in so that you have that multi-band antenna and vertical. And then just what you want to do is really make a good radial field on that thing so that you can get those, you know, long distance contacts and stuff. That's some of the stuff that's out there. Um, as far as, you know, building some of this stuff, I mean, it's, it's, it's really simple now that you kind of see some of that stuff, how it kind of goes together. I mean, it's as simple as just putting up a string of wire, um, you know, to the, to a tree or anything like that, just put a loop on it, get it down there, build yourself a little mount and, and hook your stuff up and get on the air. So, uh, please, you know, like, and subscribe to the channel. If you can, if you like the content, like, and subscribe to it, go back and watch some of those other videos and see kind of some of the construction techniques, because they're the same. You just flip it sideways. Um, and if you guys want to see something specific that I talked about, please drop a comment. I'd love to hear from you. You can get on the Facebook page too, Ham Radio Insights. You'll find it. Get on there. And uh, it's a good place to share some ideas and have that conversation. But yeah, if I see a couple of you guys want to you know, do a build on anything that I've talked about, put it in the comments because that does encourage me to, to go and do that. So, all right. Thanks for watching and go check out some of these other videos.